What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Strange New Show. Keith and Mike watch Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Today, uh, I'm sure everybody was looking forward to it. We are talking about the Elysian Kingdom. Uh, and uh, spoiler alert. I actually w was on our Patreon page where you can find Mike watching the episode there as a feature. Uh, and you can, you know, and he does it also with Deep Space Nine. One of the many glorious benefits that you get uh, as a patron at patreon.com slash KNM. But that's not my point. My point is uh, I, I read in your description that this might be your favorite episode of Strange New Worlds thus far. It's possible. Keith, I'll say that uh, of all of the Deep Space Nine episodes we've done, which is plenty at this point, and eight episodes strong here of Strange New Worlds, I've only had one technical difficulty, and that was today. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the recording cut out, and I realized I was not recording myself. Watch. Luckily, all the screenshots kept, and everything was fine in that department. But I missed the first 40 minutes of the episode, and the last 15 I captured, and I was like, well, should I keep this, Keith? And I decided... Yeah, I'll keep it because it's the first time, at least on Strange New Show, that uh, uh, that I started to cry, Keith. So here I've captured. Uh, just, <laughs> you got to cue up. <laughs> I've got. Uh, you can see a story in three screenshots. I close wow. my eyes because I I don't want to go there. I then yep. start to get a little frowny, and then you'll see by caption three, a Keith. A little frowny. I uh, I the the waterworks flowed. So, uh, oh, and I, the first 40 minutes you performed just for your cats. Yeah, it, yes, I did. And then I was recording the audio, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just post the audio. We used to do that with David E. Kelly. And then I thought, yeah, no. <laughs> it's wow. I, I, I mean, I have so, so very many thoughts. I can't wait to get into this episode with you. But before we do that, we have to talk about last week's episode, The Serene Squall, yes. and hand out your self-sealing stem bolts for that episode. JD gave it an 89, Jason Moe with a 79, Worf's boot shivs with a 72 for an average of not what I wrote down, 80. The average is 80. I don't know. The, I had an average of 87. That I'm like, mathematically, I know that's not true. Which, Mike, do you know what that means? It means you're the winner. Two in a row with your 78 last week. Congratulations. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'd like to thank I'd like to thank all the people, all the people who watched the first 40 minutes of my uh, show today. Just you by yourself. Yeah, and the just cats. me. Just me. Yeah, uh, I have a cat story to end all cat stories, but I'm I'm going to spare you on this. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a geekly story. Sounds good. Uh, but uh, but but Charlie threw his second rodent at me last Ooh. night. Oh yeah, that's 100% geekly. We're gonna have a good geekly this week. I, I saw something I want to talk about. You've got something you want to talk about. You saw a new Broadway show. We're gonna. It's gonna be great. I sure did. I sure did. All right, so let's talk about the Elysian Kingdom. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. It aired on June 23rd, 2022, which is a year ago tomorrow. The top song continued. You know, it's 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 not it's not as it will be forever, but it is as it was. You know, it's not the same as it was. As it was. Funny story, Keith. I've mentioned before, it's on my running mix, this song. And just, wasn't yesterday, the day before, on Tuesday, I was running and the sh song oh, came on. Hey, and I thought hey. to myself, I thought to myself, Mike, pay attention to the verse so that when we get to the episode this week, you can sing a verse. Mm -hmm. Forgot the verse again. You were averse to doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the top movie was also musically inclined Elvis, which took in $31 million. Two and a half hour trailer of a movie that you're watching. Uh, I did not see it. Did, did not see it. I'm Musical biofilms just really don't pique my interest very much. Keith, it's, I wanted to tell you that mm -hmm. uh, I doing something a little special for the patrons. Uh, th there is... One thing I like to do, I think I've mentioned it before, I play video games a lot, I have video game ADD. If a game doesn't grab me, I, I wanna bounce right away. It takes, it's like reading a book. Uh, the first couple chapters, sometimes I get bored and then I bounce and I don't finish. So one thing I really actually like is to play video game demos. If you go on Steam, which is a PC gaming platform for all of those who don't know, 
you can download a lot of demos for a lot of different games. And right now is a thing they're calling Steam Next Fest. And there's just hundreds, maybe thousands of game demos to play. And so I'm picking and choosing things that seem interesting. I'm recording myself playing these demos. And I'm going to maybe maybe pop it on for the patrons just for extra content, right? One of those games, Keith, is called Stray Gods, a musical role-playing fantasy adventure. And I thought to myself, well, I absolutely have to play a video game that is a musical. Sure, and sure. And what, what it basically is, is I think someone wrote a musical, as you are want to do, mm-hmm. and can't get it produced, so they're like, I'm just gonna get some animators and make this a video game, because there's almost no actual gameplay. You sort of are just watching just an, watch. a musical. <laughs> it's just a way to trick somebody into watching your musical. <laughs> so I think I'll, I'll, I think, I think I'll post that one first because it's it's batshit, and I can't wait for I, you. Might have to check that out. Let me tell you, it is really hard to get someone to watch your musical. Uh, yeah, I've I, I've spent twenty something years trying, uh, and <laughs> literally do it every damn day. So uh, I love the creative idea there. All right, so uh, you want to know what else is creative? Yeah, our headlines from the weekly world news headlines from two thousand and two. Uh, this is actually a really good oh, idea. Good Robot priests, the post, Pope's secret plan to stop sex scandals by using mechanical holy men. I think uh, that's probably a good idea and at least better than what they're doing uh, then and now and forever. So there you go. This man says, I'll give you $1.5 billion with okay. no, no follow-up? No, no funny joke there? No, nope, nope. mafia running out of mobsters. Find out how you can join. <laughs> That's hysterical. And then my maybe maybe favorite, mm-hmm. Frog Baby chokes on dragonfly. I mean, look, they spent a lot of time creating the uh, the, the Pope robot. Yeah. So the the priest bot. So uh, you know, it's, it can all be can all be gold. <laughs> all right. Speaking of gold. Strange New World, Season 1, Episode 8, The Elysian Kingdom, was directed by Amanda Rao, who uh, has done this episode and Season 2, Episode 3, which is airing this week. Uh, She also directed, it is written by Akila Cooper, who worked on Ghosts of Illyria, and Onitra Johnson, uh, the only episode thus far. And before we head into Trivial Trivia... We have something not trivial, something profoundly important to announce for our patrons. Uh, Mike, we we have picked a date now. Should we tell folks that it is now our date? We should. So we have a settled on. Uh, we're going to do our first family picnic for our patrons. Uh, Tuesday <laughs> at 7 p.m. Eastern, <laughs> uh, we're going to be watching Star Trek V. That is Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. So if you're listening to this in 2025, uh, and we're going to combine it. It's going to be an AMA. We're going to like take some questions from our the f- f- three people who can come. and uh, But regardless, and have a little chat going, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're excited to interact with our patrons who, in a moment of seriousness, have not gotten scared off by the fact that we can't grow those numbers. They have, they've stayed with our channel. They've taking care of us financially. They've allowed us to do this hobby of ours and we appreciate them and we're so excited to spend a little bit of time with them this Tuesday, June 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those of you watching who are part of the Patreon team, we're gonna do more of these and find times that are a little bit more ubiquitous for everyone. It's difficult because we have such a international- all over the world. It's crazy. But guess what? You can become part of that team. And become Mm. part of the livey goodness. And and let me tell you, the people on our Patreon are much smarter than us and are going to have a lot of fun stuff. They're going to be much more fun to chat with than listening to our stupid butts. Check it out. for sure. Patreon.com slash Keith. And who are the people who are part of that team? I'll tell you. It's Bryant Kimball Beersock. Wyatt Eldridge, Casey Clark, Jason Moe, Bren Joshua, Andrew Hayes, Jorge Navoa, and the Mysterious Wharfs, Bootshivs, Charles Babbage, Richard Coleman, CRM Productions, Nikolai Ivanovich, Lobachevsky, Delusions at Noon, JD Makes, Colin Dagan, Chris Mitchell at CRM, Pat, and Joshua Cronin. We should make sure that our uh, our other contributors are invited to the family picnic. As well as perhaps one of our one of our super tip folks, 
also should maybe mm-hmm. get that invite. We do, we do a little re- little reach out. Uh, and uh, yes, and so for those of you who are patrons who can't make it because it might be midnight where you are, uh, unfortunately, even though you can't chat with us, it will be posted up there so for you to watch all of it. And we have to find a way to capture the comments in the stream that we post. We'll think of something. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's our production meeting. Uh, So, yeah, come join them. Lots of fun. Uh, Yeah. So that's that. So now it's time for, uh, you know, I think it's extra trivial Mm. for Strange New Worlds because there isn't much out yet. Mm -hmm. So the the most trivial of trivial trivia. Now Now he he wastes your time time with with trivia. Kind of fill that void. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, <laughs> Mike. This entire show is us filling the void in our own lives. So, this whole world, this whole ecosystem, is just filling the void. All right. So, uh, one thing I think is fun: the dog that Christina Chong has in the sick bay scene is her own dog. Oh, cool! I thought so because so, it was like licking her and all kinds of fun stuff. Big fan. I mean, you know, uh, you definitely should bring your own dog to one of these things, mm-hmm. right, Mike? Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, even... pretzel. Hold on. Oh Stupid. yeah. Ah! Can't reach. No. There we go. Pretzel. Gotta put my headphones back in. Sure hope you covered all of that awkwardness while I fought with my monitors. So I brought my own little dog oh my God, I love to this event. Look at him. He's like, hey, watch up. He's got his tongue. So Keith, Jeez. my brother just got a dog not long ago named Teddy. Super cool. Really dig Teddy. And he's also got a, like a hangy tongue because they, his, they had to like remove part of his jaw. And that's why he's got a hangy tongue. Why does Pretzel have a hangy tongue? Well, I, I think a lot of it is just that Chihuahuas have super long, super hangy long tongues? tongues. Okay. I mean, pretzel also doesn't have any teeth, so there's there's not much to prevent it, not mm-hmm. much to keep it in. But uh, it is part of the uh, part of the Chihuahua experience is enjoying. He's barely the a corporeal stuff. life form. He's sort of just an energy that is inside of this. Yes, well, she is. Yeah, she's a. Well, she, uh, excuse me. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how she identifies. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but, she identifies yeah, no, as she, tired and over it. I'll tell you that. She definitely <laughs> does. Well, she, you know, she's got a lot more fire in her than you would think. Hmm. Uh, does she play with toys or do any like sort of like movement? Oh goodness, no. Uh, <laughs> but well, I mean, she she she'll she'll wrestle. She'll play you know a little bite game, mm-hmm. uh, which is not particularly terrifying if you don't have any teeth. She goes for walks, but uh, you know if you don't if you haven't met her on one of our other shows, she's completely blind, mm-hmm. and she also. Uh, her legs, especially her back legs, are all messed up orthopedically, um, just from from birth. It just whatever happened. Uh, so she doesn't get a, get around that well, and she's twelve years old. Yeah. So she lives a she lives a simple simple life. But you know, as long as she has a lap and the sun to sit in, she's happy. And now you're now you're YouTube famous. You know what? Maybe someone will beam down and bring you into the storybook ether, Pretzel, and I don't you can know. live forever. <laughs> Maybe if we do our version of this, uh, pretzels definitely coming along. All right, so let's talk about our guest stars. Of course, we have Sage Arendelle back as Rukia. We have Belinda Corpus as Patient. I don't remember that. Uh, Rong Fu as Jenna Mitchell. Alex Cap as the USS Enterprise computer, and Makambe Sim uh, Simamba, Makambe Simamba as Adult Rukia. Uh, so, I think there's, uh, there's only one thing to do. We gotta get into it. I won't give it away, but I am. Alright, let's just roll. Here. Alright, Pretzel's going back in her donut. Hi, Pretzel. We love you. We'll, we'll see if she comes back up. But she, uh, she, you know... She's got to get her uh, her 22 hours in, otherwise she's she'll be grumpy. She's respecting the WGA. She's like, you know what? I, you didn't tell me I was going to be on. I'm I'm out. 
yeah yeah that's that's 100 what's happening there so <laughs> so in our teaser the Enterprise is doing a survey of a nebula, and Dr. Mbenga is working feverishly to save his daughter. He is running out of time and not making much progress. Wait, go back one screenshot. That's really interesting. Uh, we see a, a great uh, close-up on the texture detail on the shoulder that they've added for, for this show. Is that to be a medical symbol, do you think, in the pattern there? I like if it's not I I think we should say that it is because it's it's a it's a it's interesting beautiful little detail there costumes look great uh so uh you're not making progress but Rukia just wants her dad to read to her and they read from their favorite book the kingdom of Elysium oh ha uh, here's the other part of trivial trivial I got I got confused because I was playing with a dog um and this is actually super important and yet I can't tell Mike why. Uh, the author of The Kingdom of Elysium is Benny Russell. Now, that doesn't mean anything to Mike yet, but no. for us Deep Space Nine fans, that means a heck of a lot. And I don't know if, you, if people watching this caught it, but uh, Benny Russell wrote this book. Big news. Uh, okay. <laughs> It's a beautifully illustrated and actual hard copy book, which is a nice touch here in the future. Rukia has notes on the story. She wants to change the ending. And Mbenga says, when you're a grown-up, you can write your own story. Which, uh, it's kind of a dick move, because if it were me and I were reading, I'd be like, all right, let's write this new ending. Yeah, I guess especially if, if she, she, she'd be dying. But, like, any time. Let's, all right. Screw the book. Let's let's write our own ending to this. That sounds like a fun, fun game to play. But then again, that's what I do for a living. So uh, she mentions that she really wants to see his quarters. Not sure why that would be so interesting to a little girl, but sure. I mean, I guess she wants to see anything that's other than this dentist chair in this room. Well, I mean, understandably, but I, I mean, I want to see the bridge. I want to see the warp core, like... Uh, I, like, do you really want to see, like, Dad's bedroom? Like, who cares? I'm curious. We've talked about this a little bit before. Before we get into this whole, the, the ethical nature of this storyline, we've dealt with that. Well, at least we've talked about it. I'm curious, how long has she been in stasis? We didn't really talk about that. How long, what was her life like in her first seven years? Where were they stationed? What was going on? It clearly, Did she have friends? Yeah, I so. mean... Yeah, no, that would be great for How us much to... world experience does she have? But we're not going to yeah, learn that. I'd, I'd love to know that, but 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 no. But I will say uh, to Keith, whatever, well, not to give it all away, but whatever she lacked in her first seven years, I feel like I feel like she will be compensated thusly. She will. Uh, <laughs> and will Mike be compensated for the dismantling of the episode that he likes so much he's about to <laughs> receive? Oh, no. Okay, well, okay. Get ready to have your dreams crashed. Right, okay. Well. <laughs> um, no. Uh, so what you're saying is that I'll be crying at the end of this one too? It's possible. It's okay. possible. He says goodnight and beams her out. Heroic music starts playing, and he starts working feverishly with a mortar and pestle. It's time for seems... a montage. Scientific montage. Science montage. It's wildly low tech, even though you're on the freaking Bunsen Enterprise. Bunsen burners never go out of style. I mean, my my brother is literally a scientist who deals with this stuff every day. And like, what he's doing, like he's not measuring anything. He's just like, no. beep, 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 beep. No, man. Gorgeous. All you need is a beaker. Yeah, something like that. So uh, he does what we all did in high school and accidentally create a dangerous chemical. And luckily the ship has a force field to protect him, but he does get a face full of it. Will this play out and mean anything later? Nope. Yeah, that is a little disappointing. I will say it reminded me of uh, my, I'll never forget it was in chemistry. And my partner was this, this guy, Ryan, still friends with him. And... I remember him looking over. I can't remember what we were working on. You, what I remember, remember most about the chemistry room is the smell, the chemical smell. Sure. And the eye wash station, which was very scary uh -huh. in the back. Terrifying. Yeah. And Ryan turns to me one time. I forget what we were doing. I'll never forget it. And he just goes, 
why do they let us touch this stuff? To which I still have no answer. <laughs> That's a fair, fair question. Uh, yeah. I mean, we did same, a lot of stuff. Same with Woodshop, those giant saws and stuff. It just it, none of that. None of that was a good idea. Well, I mean, it's it's a bad idea from a liability standpoint, but like that might be your only exposure to that kind of stuff. And totally you're doing right. it in a supervised environment. Totally agree. I go back to my... And you're not like eight. Go back to my non-parental view of all people parenting children. It is a sheer miracle any of us make it past 14 years old. An oh my absolute God. Well, miracle. Especially in the 80s. The 90s, I mean... Yeah, nowadays I, I, it's a little easier because people are just glued to their phones and they're not really moving Well, also you don't need to do... I mean, I think about our science. Like, we're dissecting frogs and fetal pigs. And, like, they don't do that anymore, do they? No, I don't think in elementary school, high school anymore. No, no, but, but like high school. Yeah, no, like in high school, literally dissected like a fetal pig like yeah. this big. We also did a goat eyeball. That was gross. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, do we need to do that anymore? I don't think so. Well, Umenga but, does because he's trying to solve this disease. He's going to do it all. He's going to get some leeches. Uh, all right. So number one comes in and asks why he's not been doing his job and leaving an away team unable to return to duty. Um which I'm curious about, right? Because he, so if, if they beam back from duty and he needs to clear them to return to duty, which I don't think we've ever seen on the shows moving forward. However, looking backwards on Enterprise, they still had to do a quarantine before they mm. came back in. So are they quarantined? Which means like, how are they just like sitting in a little room? They're not allowed out until Mbenga lets them out? I just want to hear you say duty again. No, more importantly, my question was this, Keith. What is the percent chance that this here mug is available for purchase somewhere? Ooh, I bet this is good. But this is a good chance. Looks cool. But you I, never I know. They it. they didn't used to. But I bet I bet today they're not going to uh, pass up a chance. It's up, like their own product placement. Oh yeah, I mean, come on, why wouldn't you? I mean, the whole show. I mean, the ship is just one big toy commercial. So, uh, yes. So she knows why he's been working so hard i.e. trying to save his daughter, but reminds him, you still got to do your job. So, it's really important that you do your job and let these people out. Go take a nap. <laughs> Come on, what an ass. <laughs> on the bridge, they finish up the survey of the nebula. Pike relishes the simple, boring survey work they've been on without any pew-pews or complications. And Spock points out, you totally just jinxed us like I did before we uh, started recording, saying, oh, you never screw up, Mike. You, we're definitely going to record this. So uh, before you poo-poo it, you got you can't yeah. tell me this isn't a really fun beat for Spock. Oh, I love this beat. Okay. No, 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 I think it's great. Um, no, no, no. I mean, like, the, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great beat. It's very original series. Um, no, I, this whole scene, mm -hmm. I was 100% I was on board with. Um, and of course, he did jinx them. They try to go to warp, no dice. Same with Impulse. The ship lurches and Ortegas is injured. Mbenga heads to the bridge to help. He's apparently the only doctor on the entire ship. And discovers, uh-oh, everybody is wearing weird old-timey medieval costumes. And Pike says, all hail the king. So I thought this was cool. Have you seen the handprint or like biofeedback switch before oh they have to hold uh, on the, to this the handle that, yeah yeah we, we've seen it on the show before and that's a throwback to the original series so cool i i love that it's like a combination of analog and digital kind of sensors it's very cool yeah well, it, i mean it's 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 strange because it is utterly uh just complicates and makes things more different. In fact, we we saw that I think in the last episode, when when Spock and uh, what's her name dove onto the turbo lift to get away from the bad guys. Oh right! And they're lying on the floor, and he had to reach up and and grab it in order to make the uh, make the turbo lift go. Um, but that's a throwback to the original series. Mm. That was a thing that they did. So there it is. Uh, so what did you think here at, at the end of the teaser? When all of a sudden everybody's from medieval times. Uh, I just, it's, it is funny how they, how you could tell someone 
was relishing and was like, this is going to be a hoot. I'm going to just go for it. Oh, well, everybody does. I, I agree. In fact, some other, some more effective than others. I will say uh, what I said to the audience who wasn't listening at the time because I wasn't recording. <laughs> what you said to your cat. So, but, but, and I meant it. It was like a preface. And I'm, I'm going to say to you, Keith, look, I don't have the breadth of experience with a lot of the other shows, but I, I do, I have seen enough TNG and a couple of uh, episodes of Deep Space Nine and have seen play sets of other episodes of Deep Space Nine where we do these departure type fantasy episodes. It, it's sure. not, it is not something new. And if you're going to do them, you kind of, as a viewer, have to go with it, right? You, you can't, we can't get into too deep into the weeds of trying to parse it all. We have to kind of just accept it and go with it. I think we can have, we'll have an argument later about whether they cover, dot enough of their I's and cross enough of their T's scientifically and logically to make it make sense. And I do have some questions as well. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, the story and the emotional beats, we'll talk about that. They might, we'll talk. But I, yeah. but I was okay with it so far. I, I mean, clearly they were setting it up in the storybook stuff, so. Oh yeah, no, me me too. I mean, at this point, I'm still like, all right, let's see let's see where this goes. Um, yeah, and and obviously, there's plenty of examples of episodes like this in Trek. I mean, you, you on, on Next Gen, you have masks. Mm -hmm. um, you have a couple of them like this Next Gen, a little one where they all de evolve, and of course, this is very similar to Dramatis Personae. But a, a point I make. On Deep Space Nine. A point I made on the watch along that it doesn't didn't get to be appreciated by anyone. So I want to I want to set it up here so we can watch as we're looking through the screenshots because I think it is just there is I've mentioned from the beginning of this series that I love the eye candy. I think the visual effects and the the set dressing and the the production work is supreme, right? This episode above most actually things I I that bounced out to me is how much practical set work they do here, practical set dressing, yeah. that they have to blend with some digital stuff and with very, it just, it, it it's very ta purposefully tangible uh, tactile, and yeah. tactile, and it, it blends really well. I think it's beautiful. Remember, this is shot digitally, super high definition. So all of the costumes, all of the practical props and set dressing and like yeah. bushes and lights and all of that have to be exquisitely detailed because it's going to be it's going to get their close up and even the visual effects like when the lightning bugs come in are blended really beautifully so we'll keep our eyes out for that but also whoever did the whoever the director of photography was on this episode the setups are exquisite the rule of thirds at play you know when we watch shows in four by three when you have a close up you just stick them square in the center because it's all you can do. Here, there's so many close-ups that they're doing with like three people. We'll get to it later. Well, they have someone uh, cropped left. Then, in the, then when they cut to someone who's cropped right with a lot of negative space. And then yeah. whenever Umbenga's talking, they crop him dead in the center. There's so much storytelling that's very purposefully storybooky. Yeah. In this episode, and it's 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 subtle, but it's wonderfully done. And we'll see. There's so many great screenshots from this episode. I can't wait to look. Yeah, and and I certainly need to shout out, and as we go forward, the costuming in this episode, mm. every single one of these costumes is stunningly And then gorgeous. we get to the evil queen, and it takes it to a whole nother level. She's, they, so they saved detailed. that trial. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I wish any of it made sense, but Spock's boy, wig. does it look yeah, great. We'll talk, but... oh, it I makes sense. Like... Uh, we'll talk. All right. <laughs> So we get flashes of pictures from the book that, that we were reading to introduce the new characters our heroes will be playing. Even though we don't know who they are, and none of it matters. Ortegas is a fighter and protector of the king, and Pike is an obsequious, simpering sycophant, and hilariously so. Uh, Ensign mounts like this guy. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. I think he's the second best compared next to the the princess. Oh yeah, because yeah, it's so different, such a di different character for her. <sighs> yeah, and I, I think I, it's in my next paragraph. Yeah, I think her her sense of comedy, getting to flex that is like maybe 
maybe like, her, we need a stronger need skill. To find some more. Yeah, yeah, I think we we might need to Riker Laon. Mm, she who is she it, it, funny. season one Riker on Next Gen is very very straight, very by the book, very rah, 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 rah. and then they all realized that Frakes is hilarious. Do you and think they, they cast her the with a dog, or she was like, you know what would be funny in this? What if I brought my dog and we put her in this little dress? Because they built oh, an, a replica dress funny. that she's wearing for the dog in that one scene. Did you I see didn't it? Even notice. That's oh, hilarious. I have a screenshot. You'll see it. Hilarious. It's licking her chest the whole time. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so, you dare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Imbenga checks the computer, and all is well on the ship. And he thinks that maybe his experiment failure is what's causing him to hallucinate. That would have been interesting. Nope. He heads back to sickbay in search of a tricorder. The halls are filled with vines and smoke. He runs into Chapel, who is some sort of a magical healer. Time out. Let me get, I'm going through a lot of screenshots here. Let's you go. took so many screenshots. I did, 215. Let's, let's just appreciate, here we go with the rule yeah. thirds, right? And what, right. what the wide angle also lets us do here is a lot of times when you go OTS, you just literally see their shoulder. But here yeah. you can actually get the whole a kind little of, bit of his face. Yeah. Um, and so the reactions are a little more specific. They do, love, a, they do a oh, lot they, of... Go, go back one. Yeah, I love the shallow depth of focus. They there. do a lot of shallow depth of focus in this, episode, or in this series. And you'll notice yeah. instead of changing shots, they'll just change focus, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, focus into the other person. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Very, very cool. So he runs into Chapel in sickbay, who is some sort of magical healer. He scans her and finds that her dopamine levels are elevated. Will this mean something later? Nope. Then <laughs> in comes La'ah. It need, it's just showing that there's nothing ostensibly wrong. They haven't been possessed. They haven't, they are still okay. Well, I guess they have been. They've been super possessed. Uh, that's a great screenshot. It doesn't appear <laughs> as though the force is benevolent. Whatever's or happening. Or malevolent. It's it's just sort of like whatever it is. Benevolent uh, is good? Benevolent is good. Malevolent is bad. So it's definitely not malevolent. Right. That's right. what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. So uh, then... In comes La'an as Princess Talia, giving another hilarious performance, wildly different from La'an. Somebody, some PA had to like write this whole thing out, each of the character bios. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, that's true. And and I, I didn't pause it. Nodding in agreement, sir. Something spurred her horse ahead. Alert. Kring Wrigley, yeah, we, we don't get the whole sentence, no, but, but clearly it's written out, right? And well, and I think the illustrations are beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's 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 really beautifully done. Look at that set dress. I mean, just really cool. And lots of dry ice. Mm -hmm. Love it. Which you don't. Which they, I guess they couldn't cut it. When she does a little twirl with her dress, you can see it all get stirred up, and it's clear yep. that just a bare floor on the bottom. But you're like, well, yeah. looks good enough. I, I mean, but I, I'd have to say, like Christina Chung's range that she shows in this. I think she because, steals every scene she's in in this episode. Because thus far, she's been so dark and and you know traumatized and and violent and buttoned up and then she's capable of this but like you said before if i'm if i'm a writer i'm like write that down because mm -hmm. we got to spend some more time we got to <laughs> we got to hurry up and fix her trauma so she can be funny now just recognize right here just plant the seed that dog mm -hmm. is just is just a dog right now no costume uh -huh. <laughs> So she's carrying a little dog that she's obsessed with, mm -hmm. and uh, and the dog's sort of wearing a costume there. It's just it? got a little thing, but it's it's just got a little hood thing on. But got, nothing. Got a little thing. Got a little cape. Mm -hmm. It's got a cape. Um, there's some sort of story happening about a mercury stone, but I can't figure out what it's supposed to mean. Mercury stone so is, then, the, is the MacGuffin they, that is, saves the day. It's a big weapon they all have. That we all know what it is, like, already. And everyone's like, yeah, I don't understand. Who, who are you? Okay. <laughs> she's so happy. <laughs> she's so happy. <laughs> oh, we're going to be in such a big fight. Oh, it's going to be great. So <laughs> then a couple of guards drag in Hemmer, who is the only other person aware that anything else has changed. 
and Benga plays along with the story to try and rescue Hammer, but fails, and they pull him into a turbo lift. So instead of doing anything in that moment, he says, we need to rescue him. Later. Because he knows the story, Keith. Jesus. But we don't. But we know he knows. Oh my God, come on. <laughs> we just talked to the space aliens on Deep Space Nine, and we and and the Nagus was like all chained. But that was that was cool. That was all right. But it had it, each of the story beats had a purpose. I, I guess you know. To I'll I'll just stop saving it for the end. My biggest problem with this episode is the story within the story is utterly meaningless. It doesn't matter. The queen, the wizard, saving the thing, not saving the thing. None of it matters. None of it has any consequences. None of it's tied to our mystery or our story. It's just things that are happening. And it's utterly pointless. Who cares who the wizard is, who what the queen wants? So none all the of times matters. that data is Sherlock Holmes and we do like that you're going to where you can find purpose for all of that. Sometimes it's just fun, man. There is always purpose to Sherlock. It has yeah. something to do with something. This but is the also, storybook, and now we're going to get to write a new ending. Like it's all but the, the stuff Sherlock is Holmes. Of- when Data does it, the actual Holmesian mystery takes up about ninety seconds, not ninety mm-hmm. well, percent. Can't wait, can't wait till we get to all time. the musical episodes that I've heard so much about. I can't wait to look, make sure that they all have a, every beat makes ties to the grand mystery somehow. It just has to mean. I mean, if you're, uh, it so looks you, awesome, it's fun. We're laughing. It Characters does, are getting it, to it, play other char- type of characters. It's just a thing we're doing. I know. I mean, all of that's fun. It just would be so much better if it had if mm. any sort of a meaning. Yeah, it would make it would be so much better if you weren't an asshole. But we just go, <laughs> we just deal with what we got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's fire. <laughs> Look how good it looks, man. We're laughing. Look at that face. Everybody's getting to play a different character. I'm not saying it doesn't look great. It's fun. I'm just... <sighs> All right. So... <laughs> so they make a plan to go do some diplomacy with the queen. And uh, in this, Laon sings and... Look. Look, she, look at the dog. Oh, the dog's wearing the matching outfit. Yep. No. Come on. <laughs> yes. As, uh, she does sing, and it is laugh out loud. It's funny. Uh, they I, all have I, takes. I just, I, I just swallowed a joke. Uh, but, you know, just just think about... Go, go back to that shot with her and the dog. Go back. And I just, I just want to uh, pull focus. Keep going. I took a Keep lot going. of screenshots. There we go. Jeez, I'm, all right, there you go. Uh, you say, look at the dog. I, I just want to say, what would Jerry the King Lawler say about Come on, that? Keith. What's, <laughs> now let's look at the rule of thirds here. Look, she's not dead mm-hmm. center of the shot. We're leaving some negative space. We can see some yep. cool stuff. Now when we look at all of these, Mbenga, every time he talks, he gets to be perfectly framed by those candles, and he's dead center 100%. of the shot, but everybody else pulled off to the third. Third. Yeah. Third. Hundred percent. So no, cool. you're 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 hundred percent right, uh, and I just gotta say, uh, Christina Chung, she can sing, uh, like mm. she she it sort of trails off and is intentionally bad, mm-hmm. but she's got some chops oh, yeah, in there. Keith really is is attracted to her talent. I'm, I'm always attracted. Mm-hmm. to Jeez, oh, yeah, maybe go back seventeen s- screenshots just to point out her talent. That well, I mean, to make a joke that only you you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got it now, Keith. Everybody's got it. <laughs> What? The whole episode's about puppies. Mm -hmm. All right, so on their way, they run into Spock, who is now a hot wizard of some sort. The wig wig is the only thing that gives me pause. I actually like the wig. I think it works for him. I can't wait till we just... We're going to have to... You know what? You guys are going to have to tell us who wins this one, because... Come on. I I think it looks great. Mm -hmm. So, um... Anson Mount continues to be hilarious as the coward. They climb up the Jeffreys tube to the dungeons and arrive in engineering where Uhura is waiting as the evil queen. Her costume is fantastic. Everything. She is exquisite. Every shot, they're like, they knew it too. They're like, well, we better get some close ups, high def it, whatever you got to do. Because, I mean, that, that, all the details and like the, the, finger pike thing you see going on yeah, there. Yeah, that giant, like, queen light they built. Logo there. Yeah, I mean, it looks looks amazing. 
Um, she wants to know where the Mercury Stone is. And uh, she insinuates that her torturers are going to search their buttholes for it. She does. Like, they're, they're, they're going to investigate you, and they're very thorough, wink. So we all know what that means. So in Act 2, we open in the dungeons, which is a transporter pad surrounded by metal bars. Mbenga fills Hammer in on what's happening. They discuss that the Mercury Stone... They discuss what the Mercury Stone is, despite literally everyone watching other than Mbenga knows exactly where we're going. Uh, Because we all know who it is. Hammer explains that he felt a consciousness try to take over his brain, but he was able to repel it with his telepathic powers, which is why he is aware that things have changed. He's able to tell also that the consciousness is coming from the nebula itself. Hemmer then breaks them out of the bars with an engineering tool. He's having fun playing the part of the wizard. He's also great in this episode. Thank God they gave him something a little more this time, I felt like. Yeah, I mean, it it, it is an underutilized character thus far. And honestly, the makeup design, I still just stare at Hemmer's makeup design. It's... And there's also a fun, subtle, you know, we've dealt with it a million times on Trek, but there's that fun, subtle nod of when you juxtapose what magic is versus what technology will be and how l- they overlap is cool. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of advanced science has always been seen as magic. Um, and he has a really good, f- and, and, you know, I think three times in the episode, they shout out science. Mm-hmm. Um, which is you know which is fun maybe maybe a little heavy handed but I'm a big science person I love science I, li- I like it it's fun so uh, we find out that Queen Uhura is angry that they escaped and sends Spock to go get them the two groups run into each other in the corridor there's some sort of a backstory with Spock's character and Hemmer's being brothers or whatever but none of it matters yeah I guess, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of context within the storybook that plays out, which I think is supposed to be clever, but because we're never, much like the, I'll, I'll acquiesce, much like the Nebula thing, we don't spend a lot of time with it in the beginning, so when it calls back to that being the MacGuffin or at the being living in that whatever, it doesn't, I mean, it well, ties I mean- together. But it's not particularly satisfying. It, it has its own internal logic, it just doesn't matter, and I and and I think that that's because I, I I watch the, the Strange New New Worlds because I haven't seen them before. I watch them as a fan first, mm-hmm. and then I watch it again and do the notes. And so after I finished watching it the first time, I'm like, all right. So as I'm noting this, what of the story of the Queen and the Fool and they're trying to do the thing and the Wizards, what of that matters to this story? Okay, and I realized absolutely fair. none of it. Fair criticism. I'm just gonna, I'm going to plant this now, and yeah. then we can we can dissect it later. I would prefer so you go to like uh, you Dorney Park, Dorney Park, right? And you go on the roller coaster, and you wait in line for three hours. You go on the roller coaster, awesome roller coaster, a lot of fun, man. Yeah, you go to a, like a Disney, a theme park, and mm-hmm. those three hours you spend in line, there's all kinds of story being told, and there's this, and there's that, and there's text, and there's blah, and then you go on the roller coaster. It's 35 seconds, and it was fun. Ostensibly, they both were just a 30-second ride at the end, and you had fun. For me, the theming and tying it together adds adds sure. a mystique, adds something. It's not particularly, that story didn't matter. It didn't tie to that. It's not like a... a no, no. Well, uh, okay, so yes, but I think for our purposes, because we spend the majority of the running time of the episode in this story... Mm-hmm. in the story of these characters in the forest and the queen and the MacGuffin and the wizards or whatever. Um, it has to be coherent. It, in order, to, It has to be interesting and coherent. If we don't already know the story, because, you know, we've precedent, we did, you know, we did a whole Robin Hood thing on Next Gen, right? Where we don't need to, like, really tell the whole world. We get it. Robin Hood, Maid Marian, mm-hmm. whatever. We, we get it. But in this case, it's an original story. So, and there's just, because you have to, like, have a character for everybody, 
I've seen the episode twice in the last 48 hours. I couldn't tell you the first thing about what the, I could not tell you the story of the Elysian Kingdom, and it wasn't that interesting, mm -hmm. right? I can tell you who the characters were. You know, like Pike is funny because he's a coward, and Ortegas is a is a sword person, and there's a couple of wizards who don't really distinguish themselves. And an angry queen we've seen in everything. But what's the story? There is no story. Well, I would also, I would also, I would also say that this is the first time with our cast of characters who we're still getting to know, for the most part, and it is towards the end of season one. So there's something to be said about that, where. I think there is enough of, hey, this is what you know of this character so far, now we're having them play against type, or we're having them play this character. I think there's enough there for me this early on that I don't need to know, the, like, that is I enough. I mean, for the performers, sure. It's really fun to see these actors do other things. But if the, the juxtaposition of the characters were somehow related to the character as opposed to the actor, None of these characters have any relation to... None of the LARPing characters have anything to do with the characters on Star Trek. It's just fun to see the actors do something else. So, let me translate this from what I'm hearing from you, and I, and I don't disagree with. Yeah. You would prefer if the, the, the characters in the show, in their new setup, or the new characters they're playing in this world that's been forced upon them if umbenga and hemmer or even these characters if they were able to manipulate their new characters inside the storybook world in order to solve the the problem like to at least make it make like use this they need they have to use the pieces set in this world to solve the rubik's cube puzzle right. yeah because they're 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 play acting their way through a play mm -hmm. but they don't need to I'm, there's I'm, no there's no purpose to them playing along and and there's nothing in the play that they're doing that has any consequence or any purpose. I want it's to, also incoherent. I have no idea what's happening. I want to call when we get to the end cuz let's get through this. I want to call to mind and we need your help to remember the episode with like Rumble Stiltskin and all those people on Deep Space 9. Right. That's a that's another fairy tale. It's a sim I, I'm going to use that as the analog and let's mm -hmm. let's you, let's hold them up against each other later. Okay. Okay, great. No, yeah. ha happy to. Uh all right. So some sort of battle. Two, yeah. Yeah, they the yes, the, there's some backstory blah, 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 but we're just full on larping now and Ortegas does do some pretty decent sword fighting. Um there is and Inter you know, th there's definitely some interesting precedent for the helmsman of the Enterprise being good at sword fighting while having lost their mind, uh, because, of course, we've seen that with Sulu on the original series. The battle is interrupted by number one coming in with her bow and arrow, just adding yet another character. I don't know what the hell's going on, but uh, it turns out her and Ortegas's character used to date, and now it's awkward. In engineering, Hemmer confirms that they're dealing with a powerful non-corporeal consciousness that did all of this, possibly reading Mbenga's brainwaves. Mbenga realizes... Is that the thing like that popped out of the mist? That's what we're led to believe, right? Like the, when, he's doing the Bunsen, when he's doing the montage of science? No! I, I think that's just entirely happenstance. There's nothing to do with the rest of the story. Oh, I thought that that was a, a red herring. It's just a waste of time. It has no, nothing to do with anything. I think that's a red herring. Because I think it, we're, I, I was led to believe that that's when it happened. It took over his... Nope. None of that happened. Like, it's... Yeah, that's it, what a red herring is, Keith. Well, well, yeah, I know. But, like, it doesn't... And we bring it up before, but it literally is just a... It's it's a, a justification to slow him down from figuring it all out like we did in the first ten minutes. It's like... Yeah, I didn't... It's just, Something to complicate the fact that we all know that the special weapon is his daughter. I, I, I didn't. Well, I mean, I didn't not know, but I mean, like, there's uh, nothing wrong. He's with that the, the the whole episode is about the daughter. He doesn't. It. it he's reading the book to his daughter. It, like, he doesn't even begin to think about. Get off maybe my, my daughter's lawn connected episode. to oh, it. Oh, I need deeper lore. Thirty-five <laughs> minutes into, it's like, oh right, I have this daughter. Right. <laughs> Was the daughter wanted them to be old girlfriends? Is that what we're led to see? 
No, you just wanted yeah, to be your friend. Yeah, the daughter wanted them. To, yes. She's like, we need more yeah. representation up in this bitch. I, I, I. So Mbenga realizes that the story has been changed. Number one, and Ortegas aren't dating in the book. Uh, she wanted them to work together. Mm -hmm. I don't. The, the dating part wasn't part of it. Uh, and this is Rukia's story. Duh. I disagree that that's trite. I just disagree. Well, it's not about being trite. It's just like we knew this ten minutes into the episode. I, first of all, I didn't. Hey. <sighs> All right, well, they finally go to pull Rukia out of the transporter, but she's not there, which takes also us- Also cool. If sure. you can tell me the last 20 minutes of this aren't really captivating television, you have a cold dead heart. The last 10 minutes are phenomenal. Okay. It's just we wasted 40 minutes of mm -hmm. my life no. getting there. So we kill more time in the sick bay, and we see that Chapel has a community theater well she's been playing with. Oh, wait, I, I went too far ahead. Uh, we all know where the daughter is, but Mbenga can't figure it out. He explains the situation about her illness to Hemmer. We see that Spock is listening in and tells Queen Uhura. She is chewing scenery and has abducted Pipe and turns him over for her side. Pipe? Pike. Turns him over on her side. It gives everyone a chance to play, but has no consequences for anything. Uh, like I said, we kill more time in sick bay before Hemmer finally puts the obvious together and they head for his quarters. They run into Pike along the way, who grabs Mbenga at knife point. Uhura shows up and they do more LARPing. Uh, we begin And it's awesome. It looks great. It's It looks, but it... It's fun, it, it, man. It has no, but it doesn't, none of this. Okay, so if the, are the steaks real or are the steaks not real? Oh, Keith because, just wants his vegetables, everybody. Got, oh, candied candied carrots? Forget it. Get get him some bitter broccoli rob, please. <laughs> I have got candy everywhere I yeah, go. Yeah, well, enjoy some. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I've had such a shitty week, and this episode was bringing me joy, and oh, it was no. like, oh, it's inconsequential, it's just fun, we get to resolve a storyline that I was like, how are they going to get out of this mess, and they kind of do it in a way that's like, okay, it's storybooking, uh, we get a happy day ever after, and no. I'm keep... pooping in Mike's tea, it's yeah, terrible. No, you're, no, what you're doing is you took a little girl's storybook, and you're shitting directly <laughs> on it, so now every time she opens the the pages, they're stuck together and smeared with ass shit. <laughs> And she's got to smell it and look at it every time she wants to read her favorite story, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my favorite episode we've ever done. Uh -uh. <sighs> so we begin with more dialogue. Well, you know what's matter. hysterical? Do you want to know what's hysterical, hysterical, hysterical? Is that my only real wormhole is that <laughs> he knows that, that Pike is going to turn coat on him. And he even oh, says yeah. it. He's like, oh, yeah, I knew this, but that is a wormhole. I don't like that. Uh, and <laughs> we did this whole scene. And Benga's like, you won't touch my daughter. And Hummer does this huge LARPing thing with abracadabra. Which is awesome. And beams them out of the hallway. Yeah. So none of that needed to happen. So if he's like, I'm going to save my daughter, who is literally dying by the minute. No, let's take five minutes and do a community theater LARPing scene that's utterly unnecessary. Keith, do you know how long our podcast should be? We don't have lives. We don't have daughters we need to save. We're lonely men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all we have to do is get back to our failing careers. You know, like, Keith, speaking of our failing careers, I did a tour with you once, Titanic, yeah, which, which, is, which is ironic, given the circumstances. Yeah, well, Your costume kind of looked like that. <laughs> you kind of looked like Hammer. You had that wig? Uh, I did have the wig. And you had, like, a similar shade of teal going on. I did have a teal, and, it, and I was very pale. And you and you were had dancing a blonde and wig. chewing the scenery up just kind of like that. Ah, uh, abracadabra. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to be an abracadabra right now. Okay. We'll uh, workshop it. I got it's pretty good. So after wasting the last five minutes of my life posturing for no reason, 
Mbenga finally gets to his quarters, where his daughter is waiting in an Elsa costume. He scans her Total and asshole. discovers the illness is gone. And she says, my friend made me better. Hemmer comes in to help them communicate with the entity using his telepathic powers. He speaks to the entity. And I called him Otome Brown. I don't know what that... You know Otome? I don't. Well, Keith, you'll recall, uh, I think it was one of our episodes, I was ma- uh, we were talking about Whoopi in... N- n- in uh, what's that? Sister Act. Sister Act. But then what about, what's Whoopi's other great role? Otome Seely? Brown? No, Otome! Ghost! I don't, I don't think I've... You've never I've seen, seen Ghost? Ghost? I've seen, like, pieces of it. I don't think I've actually ever seen You've never the seen thing. The Little Mermaid, and you've never uh-huh. seen Ghost? Yeah. You but well, how many times I've seen Star Trek V? You got, I can't even, you've never seen Ghost. Patrick Swayze. Ghost. Demi Moore I mean, at the, at the I mean, I'm aware hotness. of the movie. Oh, my God. I don't even know where, if we can continue. <laughs> Our friendship <laughs> is over. This is the last episode of the k and Empire. <laughs> I like that his little antennas are like, Bing. Whoopi Goldberg Bing. spends that whole episode basically, or that whole movie basically channeling Patrick Swayze so he can talk to Demi. So this is what he's doing in this scene. That was my joke. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That every other human being <laughs> over 15 gets, except for Keith. Uh, uh-huh. All right, so. <laughs> I also he's... love that the being is named Debra. Debra. What's well, after her mom? I get it. I know. I Where's your cold dead heart? Oh, where? I'll tell you. Right here, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a human being with emotions does during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you okay. All right. I, I, I just stop myself from saying like six different horribly mean things to say. All right. So uh, he speaks as the entity. And she identifies. And it is with awesome, the by the way. The, the sound design is really cool for that. Those effects. Yeah. She identifies with the child because they were both lonely, and we learn, unfortunately, that she's only cured by the presence of the entity. So Mbenga is forced to make the impossible choice: allow Rukia to die, or allow her to join the entity and lives. He gives her the choice. And now she can write her own story. She decides to stay with the entity. She hugs her father and is beamed out with a bunch of sparkles. Then my oh, again. I would have yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt it. Mm-hmm, I felt then it, but sparkles... I was too busy writing down snarky my snarky summary, so <laughs> I ruined all the sentiment for me. That's not true. I See, I watched it as a fan first. The sparkles return and it's the adult version of Rukia. Years have passed in her experience, and she says, thank you. I'm happy, safe, and doing great. And she says, go live your life and be happy. And Bob's Alus Manukun gives a phenomenal understated so. performance mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Um, like his, and, and that's the thing, the last, Five minutes of this, I think, are heartbreaking and beautiful. And Babs does. He's excellent mean, with, the whole episode, I think. With everybody, like, chewing the scenery, he plays it. And, and that makes, that really helps this whole thing. He's such an understated uh, performer. And, like, he's he rescues. He's been fighting these tears for eight episodes. He really has. And the fact that he holds on mm-hmm. to this last moment, it's really, I mean, his his performance is so well calibrated throughout this whole thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, I felt, it, look, I mean, yes, I'm, I, have, I have plenty of issues with this episode, but those, but those two scenes 100% got me too. Like, I cried too. Um, so she, uh, she leaves the ship and it returns to normal. And nobody remembers what happened, even Hemmer. Later, number one comes in to check on Mbenga, and he explains that he remembers what happens in the last five hours, 
which is weird because he didn't explain it right away. So the entire ship has been going around trying to figure out what happened. He's like, he knows, but I'm not going to tell anybody. Um, which is uh, which is which is odd. But uh, we resolve this story. I think uh, I think put on your boxing gloves. We're going to talk about the rest of this episode and uh, in our in our segment. Uh, and, and of course, uh, we we heard from the mysterious Anne on uh, our our Patreon, patreoncom slash k and m, uh, who says I like punch at home. I've been thinking of good replacements for stem bolts. Hell yeah, they're self sealing. Haven't come up with anything good yet. Pike puns, Enterprise bingos, Vulcan body swaps. There's lots of uh, we we might need a uh, a new uh, new currency. But uh, yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, and it definitely isn't the punchy skeep. He definitely says, hit him, hit it, hit it. No, punch it, hit it. No, he says hit oh. it. I, I paid attention this time. Oh, okay. and then he has to well, say it twice. In fact, in but Mike has to. But Mike says punch it, and I think and the punchies, I, I, it, it doesn't have to make sense. Hit it. <laughs> Not everything needs to make sense, Mike. Sometimes it's just fun. Hit it. Punch what's it. That, what's that? What's that night? No, it's definitely hit it. He says. No, but you say punch it. I I think we should. <laughs> Keith, it's time. Or the punchy. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of punchy. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of punchy. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Can't wait to get into the studio and get that locked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. What do you say? Uh, are, are we there yet? Let's talk about wormholes in the plot, Michael. Oh, God. You know what, Keith? I, I, I'd i like to relinquish the balance of my time to Keith Varney. Go for it. Have a, have a, have a, have a blast. <laughs> just poop on that little child's book. Smear it. You know, don't just poop on it. Smear it, close it, open it, smear it. Wow. It's a visual. Wow. So, uh, oh, I'm sure you have a list. Do you have a full spreadsheet or just a checklist? Or <laughs> I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> no, I mean, look. So I'm, basically I'm the whole other, plot, right? The whole I'm reading plot. other IMDb reviews. This one says, please, Star Trek, never do anything this bad again. <laughs> no, I, I, look, I, I think I've, I've laid out my criticisms here. Um, I think there is a version of this, which is really good, and and I. We're we just jumping right to the end. Is that what we're doing? Look, we know the, we know oh. our, we both agree the ending is the best, right? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, best best moment clearly Bob's yeah. performance in that last scene, mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, also, I'd like to just point out the the performances of our cast doing crazy stuff. I mean, like the Pike stuff. The nobody, stuff. nobody, nobody phoned it in right everybody got the script and was like yeah let's do it and they all committed so that's to be commended super super fun i mean like the performances were terrific that last scene was great um you know i have i have <sighs> ding ding I ding don't... let's just do this <laughs> you get some Round one in the blue corner, Mike and Deglio. So look, I'm not saying this is a 90 plus stem bolt episode. I just don't think it's gar hot garbage. Um, I, I think that they were, I think their hands were a little tied. This is a really complicated storyline. They absolutely could not kill this guy's daughter. They could not do it. I just think it, it's the first season of a show. They've, they've strung it on. They couldn't do it. I just think it would leave a really bad taste and it would, also give him such a tragic kind of centerpiece that we sort of already have with Noonie and Singh. We already kind of have that character. We don't yeah. we need him to have some joy or we need to kind of find out. Right now he's consumed with this storyline. So he's we had so to shed sad. it. It's hard we had to, to watch. shed it and we and I don't think we could kill this little girl because we've met her and we love her. I just I didn't see a way for them to do that effectively. So I think as a, a way to get out of a tricky storyline that they maybe hamstrung themselves with, I think it was 
and I, I even think they knew that it was, I don't wanna say the word trite, I think they knew it was very convenient, and thus they wrapped in this this fairy tale wrapper so they could say, you know what, Happy, they all lived happily ever after, the end, and just like kind of move forward. I'm not <laughs> yeah. saying it's the best way to do it, but it worked, mostly because of the performance of I think the daughter and uh, the, the gentleman playing Umbanga, their names I am not privy to, Keith will tell us. Uh, Bob's Alusan, Alusan Mokun. Mokun. Alusan Mokun. So, yes. B but whatever alchemy, the screen, it, it all came together. I wept. It worked for me. The ending, it, it now, will it justify the means? That is a good, a good question. But it, but it worked. And I think that we achieved the prime directive here, which was get the storyline done before the end of season one so we can do something different with this character next season. And uh, also, like, get us out of this weird question of should we be doing this? Should someone else know we're doing this? It's just him and number one kind of keeping a kind of major secret on this ship. So <coughs> I'll agree with, I'll pre agree with your, with. I think that <coughs> the idea of the You're doing a pre bottle, the <laughs> pre bottle. Uh, at, hey, at my age, any bottle is uh, <laughs> as long as it's working. Yeah. So the <laughs> the it's terrible the entity I think is actually just like I feel about the prop the the wormhole profits is a really cool a non corporeal non time constrained entity is being is really cool. Would have been nice to have known more about that character or maybe spent some more time. I would have, I, it is a more interesting plot and and how it could help the daughter and why can't you, if you can take it with you or heal, like what, maybe there's something, can we get your essence? Also the how did you do this to everyone is a, is, is a question. Is it using hollow tech? Is it manifesting these things magically. I had, that was a question I could have saved for you. Wormholes I, I was curious about because all the stuff seemed tangible and they still seemed to see the computers and such. So there was a lot of confusion there, but mm -hmm. maybe it's because I said at the very top going in, if, oh, if we're gonna do this sort of fairy tale departure thing, I'm just gonna go with it. And that's what I did. And I found the humor and the the, the crazy sort of playing off type for the different characters to, to be enough for me and to know that he knew where the story was leading and he was just kind of going through the beats of the book was enough to lead me through. Uh, it was a fun episode. Now, I will say, to kind of talk myself down a little bit, if this was a fun episode in a 26 season or 26 episode season, I'd probably it'd probably be more forgiving when it comes to rating it. It is using an entire episode on a sort of fanciful plot that is asking you not to think too deeply about it. So I give it a little more deference because I think I was moved and because I found it funny and I, I, I was looking for a romp a little bit. And I felt like everybody handled the comedy well and understood the tone and the tone seemed pretty consistent throughout and so it didn't bother me. Now, mm -hmm. all of that said, it didn't ask any incredible questions. It asked the Sophie's choice, but then didn't actually give their, the only consequence to Sophie's choice is you don't get to be with her as she grows up. She gets to live and she doesn't have to die and we get to Which heal her disease. he didn't know because like he could come back and visit her anytime. I don't think he knew like, oh, in because like, if, if time keeps going at that pace, mm -hmm. by the time he's had breakfast, she's dead. Yeah, but she lives in, it's not linear for her. It's kind Yeah, of, I guess she lives forever, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, all said, and, and I still, when we when you're done, I want to I wanna compare it to that other episode as far as meat goes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't think it was great, but I was moved, right? And I have to give it its, its, its credit for that. And I didn't think it was like a complete throw it. I didn't think it was garbage. I, I, I think it was solid. I'm going to give it 72 self-sealing stem bolts. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look. I'll say off the top, the ending of it emotionally was very satisfying. I thought it was beautiful. The performances were great. Um, I think the performances throughout the entire episode were terrific. I mean, it was really fun to give this cast a chance to let their hair down, um, you know, like... Specifically, Anson Mountain, Christina Chong, like, were, uh, gave 
terrific, completely different mm-hmm. performances mm-hmm. than we've seen, um, which I really, really enjoyed. They were like, we knew that Anson Mount was funny, right? And But he's able to be funny in a very different way. Christina Chung, I had no idea, was as funny as she is. Mm-hmm. And like, I can't wait to dive into that. That's great. Um, and I think all of them brought something different to what they were doing. Um, so that so that that part was cool. The costume design, fantastic! Like such great costumes. Those those will be really fun. I'm sure they'll sell them for charity, and 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 that will be great. Um, I think there was there's an episode in here that works. Mm-hmm. They just didn't. I, like if I were the showrunner, I'd say like, okay, I see where you're going. Um, cool. We have plenty of precedent for wild fantasy stories. We have precedent for coming across sort of omnipotent beings in the mist who are able to sort of magic stuff. Um, great. I'm fine with that. Um, you know, I understand we need to bail on this daughter storyline. Um, I think that, I think they realized that was a mistake. Um, it was a great setup, but I don't think they had any plan on what to, how to resolve it. Um, and so they kind of just punted and I, I wish they had, you know, I guess the same thing. I wish they'd, they'd really thought through and come up with a more satisfying conclusion to that. Um, because at the end of, at the end of it, now that that's sort of done, it didn't really have a purpose, right? The, the, him keeping it a secret didn't really pay off didn't really have a purpose um his searching his you know his quest to find a solution to this medically didn't have a purpose he didn't right it it, none of none of that actually you know other than making him sad i don't think we learned much about him as a character either no and they also have teased like a few times of other beings potentially leading him towards I definitely yeah. thought he was going to solve the medical problem. Right. If n- not having him solve it, yeah. Um I think weakens the character, but I th- I think they were at this point like how do we get out of this in a way that does the least harm? Deborah. Uh, because because the character was weakened by being hamstrung by this tragic thing that was happening that didn't go anywhere and didn't have a solution. So like I I wish that they'd come up with a better way to do this um just putting a pause here can we agree going forward anytime we have a plot that we need that we feel needs to be jettisoned and so we take the quick escape hatch we call it Mm -hmm. a deborah call it a deborah yes 100 percent. they deborah the deborah the daughter um so you know it's, it's it's the same complaint right they they wrote an interesting idea but didn't actually follow through with the story and and so the the fantasy the fairy tale of it all doesn't have a story it's they they ask us to invest and like they're asking us and they're like they're showing us pictures from the book to sort of like it's this person it's that person which i i almost i would not be surprised if they did that in editing Mm. Because nobody had any idea what mm. the hell was going on, and they're they just trying to find the book s- before. And, and any time well, they, they referenced her? the book before, but none of these characters mm-hmm. we've we've ever heard before. And so it's it's a little bit like, all right, Broadway nerds, let's go down a rabbit hole. Uh, the original production of Merrily We Roll Along on Broadway, which is uh, a complex story. It's a it, it's, it's a music. It's a Sondheim musical. The story works in reverse, and so uh, at the end of it all of our characters are graduating high school. So they're very young and whatever. But at the very beginning of it, they're all old people. And what they, they cast a bunch of like teenagers and like very young people. Um, Jason Alexander was one of them. And so Chip Sign was, was in it. Anyway, point was in the beginning of the run in previews, nobody had any idea what was happening in the story. Everyone was so confused. The audience was like, I have no idea who anybody is or what they're doing or what they want. To the point where by the time they opened, they put all of them in t-shirts. They're just a t-shirt that says manager, agent, whatever. They just said who the character was. It was so confusing. They had to put them in t-shirts that just put the character's role in it. 
And I feel like that's what happened here. They they have this big, complex story, fairy tales thingy that they're telling, but we don't have any idea what's going on. We have no idea who these characters are, why, you know, what do they want? Who cares? How does that relate to uh, the story that we're telling? It doesn't. It has no relation. It has, it has nothing to do with what Mbenga's journey is. Nothing to do with what her journey is. I don't... And we spend, like, 35 minutes of our time rapidly trying to catch up the audience on a complicated story with all these characters, and none of it matters. Well, look, your criticism that it doesn't matter, I think, for a show where, like, the plot's important, I totally agree with. But but I don't think it's supposed to matter. I don't think they wanted it to matter. It's like kids play... Because ultimately, if you think about it, it's, it's two little girls playing dolls, right, in this episode. Right. And uh, which which is fine, but don't try to make it understandable. Don't try to make it matter. Don't spend the majority of the episode. It's just general plot intrigue or like uh, throne Game of Thronesy type stuff. I don't think I wasn't trying to figure it out too much. I I would say that they could solve that maybe a little better by having the journey be. Where's my daughter? We gotta find my daughter from the beginning. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. This should be happening around a story that is happening, but they flipped it. They made that the story we're supposed to be following. Okay. And Mbenga's journey was something that was also happening around it. They they invest so much time, screen time and character time, and they're flashing the book pages to try to make us understand what's happening. So in the Rumpelstiltskin episode, what was the plot of that episode? Like th- those characters were actually had a they had a they were trying to achieve something, right? Absolutely. All of those characters. Buck Bakai was in it, I think. You know, Buck Bakai and and and, and all of those, and in the the Deep Space Nine, uh, if wishes were horses, if you're paying at home, those told us something about the characters. Right, it was it was uh, Jake's fantasy. It was Molly's fantasy. It was right. the collective anxieties. It was related to our characters. It had something to do, you know. If they told the story that like these were subconscious, like all of our all of our characters on the Enterprise, this is a version of the person they'd like to be, or a version of the person they fear being, mm-hmm. or if it had, it, it but it had nothing, it no ties to anything. We're not learning. We're learning about the actors. We're like, oh crap, they have some range. We're not learning anything about the character. We don't learn anything. You know, take Pike, right? We learn Anson Mount is really funny in this extra way. We learn nothing about Pike. It's not about Pike. We don't learn anything about the girl, right? We don't learn anything about Abenga. It's this story we don't know the story to. Otherwise, so make it make it a story that we do know, so you can shorthand all of it, like they did with the Robin Hood stuff. Make it Snow White. Right, and and then Benga can use his knowledge of Snow White to work his way through it, um, so that uh, so or, or you know so like make it a story we all know. How how does knowing the story of Snow White and you're dropped into it? How are you able to navigate through what you want because you know what's going to happen? But we don't know that as an audience, and it's like it, it felt like a freaking book report. We're trying to figure out who all these people are. I just so I just wasn't trying to follow it that hard, I guess, but. Which is which is fine, but I sat there for thirty minutes of them telling me a story I'm not trying to follow. I mean, I, I it's funny because I agree and disagree concurrent. Like, I, you're right. <clears throat> you know, the graphics are fighting as much as we are. <laughs> what? How did that happen? <laughs> when did, did that just start? <laughs> it's been like five minutes. Oh, okay, love it. Well, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> what is the, the other? What is the other bumper that's on there? Oh, about. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but th- but that's how the episode felt. It's like, well, all these things are happening, and I and I it's all incoherent, and I don't know why. I just didn't feel that way. Yeah. Well, folks, <laughs> I feel like uh, so I was doing while you were talking. I'm looking this up. So this episode on IMDb is rated to six point one. Okay. Which puts it in the bottom ten of all of like any Star Trek show. Hell so. Man. No people, way. people were not feeling it, uh, but I need to give my rating on this. Um, so the the lowest rating I've given is a sixty two to Ghosts of Illyria. What about me? The lowest one you uh, was a sixty six, also to Ghosts of Illyria. I feel good um, about my seventy two then. Yeah, and and I <sighs> because look, not only am I 
did I like the ending emotionally? Like I said, everything at the beginning. I think this was one of the most technically beautiful shot, shot ones. I think there was some good storytelling happening in the production work. I think the design work was incredible, and you know, all of that factors in for me and the experience as a whole. So I feel good with seventy two. That gives me. I feel. Yeah. I feel good. I just. Yeah. So you I mean, better I, go I, low I, now. You chat on it so hard. You better. No, go no. Low. I'm definitely gonna go low. And and like the ending of it also felt really rushed. It, just, it it felt like unearned sentimentality. Like, of course, he's going to lose his daughter. He's going to be sad. We're all going to be sad about it. But, like, it doesn't have a purpose. It's just sort of, it's, it, we're, we're, what was it? Deborah Ng? Pete Shitter got off the, the book. <laughs> uh, you're going to get 57 self-sealing stem bolts. And 15 of those are just elevated by the performances of the cast in this show. So th did. that brings you into a low 40 if you if any other cast. If it were any other cast, if if they didn't do such a good job of of making me emotionally connect with this hot nonsense. Uh well folks, uh we might continue doing other shows. We need your rankings. Rankings, rankings. <laughs> we need to know. I need to know am I the only one? I think yeah, I'm going to be the only one. I'm going to be the only I'm one. I'm super curious what everybody you know, so else it. thinks. So uh, please leave your rating and, and and any of your thoughts in the comments here below on the Screenshots YouTube. of you crying? What are you? Screenshots <laughs> of you crying. <laughs> but why are you crying? Are you crying because you're confused and frustrated? Or are you crying because you care for the characters? Hey, tune in on... Let's see, it's Wednesday. So on Saturday, Keith and I are going to be looking at uh, Star Trek Toys. What did we do this Saturday, Keith? Do you remember? Oh, we have some Deep Space Nine, maybe some Transporter Deep Space Nine episode, uh, figures. Yeah, so that one's in the can, so we're going to be friendly with one another. So don't don't get surprised. But then, of course, oh, that's on Sunday. Check that out. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. And then on Monday, our next live show, see if Keith and I are still friends over on K&M Geekly. That's uh, right. And then on Tuesday... Mike is going to love the shit out of Star Trek V. And Which everything I've read tells me is terrible, so I'm very confused. You're going to love it. Yeah, I can't wait. So uh, It's also incoherent. Yeah, we're going to talk about Shucked on Broadway and uh, <laughs> Astro. I'm going to see the new Wes Anderson film, Asteroid City, Asteroid Planet, Asteroid something. Metroid. Yeah, well, well, we'll talk about it on Monday Never after I see it. Never heard of it. it. Uh, we did a practice show. You can check that out on YouTube. We do Strange and Show. But guess what? We do Deep Space Nine on Wednesdays, which is just firing all cylinders right now, season three. And we're wrapping it up pretty soon. I know. We're, and we're talking about one of my favorite episodes uh, of that season from Deep Space Nine. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so you can check out all our stuff. Uh, you can also check out our, our next Tuesday. We're going to be doing a live show. Everything cool happening on the Patreon. Lots of cool good stuff. Patreon.com slash K&M. You can pip. You can pop. Yeah. Yep. You can pip, you can pop, you can uh, you can fight about this episode. I can't it wait was fun. for your it's thoughts. It's fun when we don't agree. Oh, I mean, honestly, like, look, we're, we've, we've been play fighting. This mm -hmm. has been so much fun, Yeah, I think, for both of us. 100%. So, so uh, thank you so much for watching. We will see you back next week with the episode All Those Who Wander. Is this season finale? No, penultimate episode of the penultimate season. Penultimate okay. episode. I have a feeling... And I don't know because I haven't seen it, but I have a feeling we're going to finish real strong. Hey, I'm excited about it. So it's not how you start; it's if you start, and it's not how you finish; it's when you finish. No, I just, I just, no, I just, Bye. I just, I deleted so many things. Things until then. This has been <laughs> Steve my one page show. Thank you for watching KNM Entertainment. If you enjoyed our particular brand of nonsense, please like and subscribe. Or become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash knm. <laughs>